Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Grace is indeed amazing, is it not? Especially when we understand its comprehensive work in our lives. Often when we think of grace, we think only of salvation. Uh, but biblically, grace isn't just for salvation. It also leads to our sanctification. For listen to what Paul says in Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly and righteously and godly in the present age. True grace doesn't just affect a person's eternity. It influences their lives in the here and now. In reference to what grace does, Paul says it instructs. This means that grace teaches, it disciplines, it educates. God's saving grace not only saves the rebellious sinner from their earned condemnation, God's grace, when truly experienced, will teach the sinner to no longer fall or obey sin's allurements and impulses. And this instruction happens in two ways. First, through negative instruction. God's saving grace teaches the believer first to say no to ungodliness. The word ungodliness points to the person who lives life without a reverence for God. It is the person who does not have a fear of God before their eyes and thus they do not turn away from evil. God's saving grace instructs the believer to reject living life like that and without a reverent fear of God. Secondly, God's saving grace instructs the believer to reject worldly desires. Or you could even say worldly lust. These are the internal longings after that which does not please the Lord. These are the root desires at the heart level for things that are contrary to God's will. This is what the Apostle Peter refers to as the fleshly lusts, which wage war against the soul. This is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. True grace, saving grace, teaches us to avoid what is not pleasing to the Lord. And then there's the positive side of instruction. These are the things that we are to do and what grace helps us to do. Paul says we are to live sensibly. I mean self-controlled. We are to live righteously, in line with God's standard, found in His Word. And we are to live godly lives, that is, lives that are devoted to God, His glory, and His purposes. True grace is comprehensive in its saving work. True grace doesn't just affect a person's eternity, it influences their here and now. I love the way that Thomas Brooks puts it. Saving grace makes a man as willing to leave his lusts as a slave is willing to leave his galley or a prisoner his dungeon. Grace is indeed amazing.